Welcome to our Nuxt3 middleware course. My name is Ben Hong, and I'm a VUE core team member and Nuxt ambassador, and I'm excited to be here on this journey with you. In this course, we'll be learning about the fundamentals of middleware with Nuxt3, exploring its different types and use cases, and by the end of it, you'll be able to handle things like authentication, redirecting pages, and running custom logic before your pages render like a pro. For this course, some prerequisites that may help with the learning journey include a basic understanding of Nuxt3, a basic understanding of Composition API, and familiarity with the script setup block when it comes to writing code logic for your single file components. If you're unfamiliar with any of these topics and would like to learn more, be sure to check out the links below. If you'd like to code along with me during this course, be sure to get the code from the repo Nuxt3 middleware. Inside of our project, we have a standard Nuxt3 app where we have a components folder, which manages all our various components. We have our layouts folder for determining layouts of how the page will look so that it's consistent. And then inside of here, we have our pages directory, which manages all of our routes. As you can see here, we have our standard index page for our homepage, login and logout, as well as a profile directory where we can manage a dynamic parameter of username for the different profiles that we will be looking at. In addition, we also have a public directory here, which contains some assets for the CSS, and here inside of the app.view file, we're actually using the use head composable in order to declare our link elements in the top, where we can go ahead and import these various CSS files, where you can see here, and that's what it looks like. And if you're wondering what the CSS library is, we're leveraging Pico CSS, which is really just a minimalist CSS framework for basically making your app look pretty nice, just get it up and running for things like prototypes and that kind of thing. So if you're ever looking for a CSS library to play around with, highly recommend it. It's fairly easy to get started with. And with that, we're now ready to take our first steps with Nuxt3 middleware. When you hear the term middleware, it can mean a lot of things. After all, the generic definition of middleware is any software that ties two pieces of software together, which to be honest, is pretty vague, right? So imagine you're organizing a big event like a music festival. There are several stages, each with its own set of performers and activities. And now before people can get to the various areas of the event, you might need like a security checkpoint where staff members can check whether or not the attendees have the various credentials or tickets that are required in order to access that area. And the thing is, is that some areas may even only admit special guests if they have like a VIP ticket, for example. And these checkpoints are critical to ensuring that events functions as expected and everyone has a great time. Well, when it comes to middleware in Nux, think of it like a checkpoint that allows you to basically run some code before the page is rendered. Common examples of code that you'd want to run in middleware include things like checking for authentication, redirection, analytics, and so forth. Now, there are two types of middlewares to be aware of. One type is server middleware, and these are functions that run on every request before any other server route. And some of you now may be thinking, servers? What are you talking about? I'm not, I'm not managing any servers, I'm not running servers. And don't worry, if you're thinking that, this type of middleware only applies to Nux3 server things. And so given that this requires knowledge of the Nux3 server, this is something that we won't be covering in depth inside of this course, but we'll cover in a future course. That said, I just wanted you to be aware of it because there are two types of middleware when it comes to middleware within Nux3. And the other type of middleware where we'll be spending most of our time this course is known as client middleware. And these are functions that run before navigating to a route. And just so you know, the more technical term for this kind of middleware is known as route middleware. So extending on the event analogy, think of route middleware as giving you the ability to check whether or not a user has the VIP ticket before allowing them to access the corresponding page. And if they don't have the VIP ticket, then the middleware can redirect them to a different page or if needed to display an error message. Now, some of you may be wondering, why do we need middleware? After all, if we wanted to simply run code before a route is being navigated to, wouldn't we use something like navigation guards from Vue Router? Here's the thing. As applications grow, one of the key factors in ensuring that it is scalable and maintainable is consistent and standardized patterns. Just like state management, there's nothing stopping you from putting together your own custom patterns through use of composables and reactive data, but there are clear advantages to using industry standards like Pina. Similarly, Nux Route Middle Guards provides a standard pattern for managing route guards and running code before navigation. All in all, middleware is a pretty great technique that can make your Nux application more efficient and secure. Like the checkpoints at a music festival to make sure that only the right people get access to certain areas, middleware makes it easy to run custom logic in between each route on your application. And the best part? It ensures consistency and standardized patterns, which makes your application more scalable and maintainable. All right. Let's dive into what the basic anatomy of middleware looks like in the next lesson.